Welcome back to the final lesson in UV layout and texturing using a skateboard. In the previous lesson, we did the textures in Photoshop, and now we're going to bring them in here and attach them to our skateboard. Currently, our skateboard has the default Lambert 1 shader on it, and you don't ever want to come in and mess with the, the Lambert 1 shader. You don't want to change the colors on it. If I were to just, let's say, change the color on here, uh, it would change everything, but if you were to create something new, like a cube, it would also change any new geometry that you bring in here. So you always want to leave that default setting alone with the Lambert 1. So let me just back out of there. So we need to attach new shaders on here. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my Hypershade. It's under the Rendering Editors Hypershade. And this has all of our shaders in here. So we've got both Maya and Mental Ray. If you're not seeing your Mental Ray shaders, you need to go and load up the plugin. Uh, Mental Ray comes in as a plugin to Maya. So it's under Settings and Preferences, all the way down to Plugin Manager. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom here, you'll see Maya to MR, that's Mental Ray. You want to go ahead and check that and go ahead and auto load that. If you need to refresh it, you can do that. And you should see it come up in here. Okay, so for the deck, we're going to select a Maya Blinn shader. And I'll leave this open here so you can kind of see what's going on. This is the work area here, so that's our new shader. So I like to rename everything so I know what's what. So this is the, uh, the deck, and I'm going to call it Blinn so we know what it is. And under the color, attribute down at the very end. There's the checker box. We're going to attach that Photoshop file through here by clicking on it. It's going to open up this window here and file would bring in anything other than the Photoshop file but since we have a Photoshop file we have to use the PSD file input. Okay so you can see uh, it just added onto our network right here. This is our blin and it's black right now because we don't have anything attached to it yet. So if we uh, click on the PSD file, and it's going to look for an input. We can click on the icon here for the, the file. If you have your scene set properly, it's going to take you right out to your source images directory where you save the deck texture Photoshop file. So we can go ahead and select that. Click on there, and now you can see that it's attached. It's also attached it to the transparency, which we don't want. If we hover over this line right here, the connection between the file input and the blend, we can see that it's going into the color and the transparency here. Typically, you're going to see a thick line right here connecting between the two, and we want to just see a thin green one. So let's break that connection just by coming over here under the attribute editor. We can right mouse click and say break connection over that transparency and we'll see that uh, go back down to the, the thin green line right there and also we won't be seen through the sample right there. So go ahead and make sure that connection is broke. Uh, typically when you bring in Photoshop files it likes to automatically attach it to the transparency. So we're not going to add any bump mapping or specular mapping to this. This is just uh, kind of a one-shot uh, texture here with the color what we painted in Photoshop, and just very simple introduction to UV texture mapping and shaders just using the color. So let's go ahead and middle mouse drag and drop that onto our skateboard. And make sure you have six selected over here. So if you click on your scene and hit six on the keyboard, that should bring up the, the textures. Okay, and we're not seeing it on the bottom here yet. Uh, we can drag a marquee over this and then right mouse click over the deck blend and go up to assign material to selection and that's going to assign it to the overall selection right there. Instead of dragging and dropping it onto each one, we can do it that way. So there's a lot of different ways to attach materials. Uh, that's one where you can just select multiples, right mouse click over the shader and assign that material. You can drag and drop from here as well as here. Drag and drop that onto your, your object or you can select the object and right mouse click and go down to assign existing material and you should see that deck blend right there. That's why you want to go in and name everything so you can find things a little more easily down here. Okay, and now we're going to get started with adding procedural textures to our tire as well as the truck. 
We're going to start with the tire and we're going to use Mental Ray shaders for this. We're going to use uh, the MIA car paint fin that's going to be for our truck. Uh, we're going to use a metallic paint color for, I just added it in the scene right there, for the axle going across here, give that a little bit different color as well as the rims and nuts in here. So those are going to have a separate material. And then our tire is going to have sort of a translucent plastic look to it and we're going to use the MIA material uh, preset for that. So let's go ahead and just click those and add them out here. And the last one was our paint. And we can rename these so we know which one is which. So our MIA car paint, we double click on that. It's going to bring it up into our attribute editor. And we can rename that. I'm just going to call mine MI truck. So I know that that's for the truck. And then the MIA material, I'm going to double click on that and change that to wheel. So MIA wheel. And then the MIA metallic paint which is just a little bit different uh, look to it. We're going to get kind of a metallic look for that. We're going to use that for the rims. So MI rims. And we're going to change the colors on these. We're not going to use uh, the default settings. We're going to change them up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to start with the wheels. I'm going to shift select all of them. So I've got all four selected right there. And then I'm going to come over to my work area, right mouse click over the MIA wheel, and say assign material to selection. Okay, so you probably saw it just go to a little bit lighter gray right there. We're going to change the colors right now. So I'm going to slide this over. You can kind of see the, the wheel here. And we can actually just go ahead and minimize that. So let's change the colors on here. We've got the diffuse color, which is the main color. And I'm going to choose sort of a green color on mine. I'm going to kind of do this green color of her feet and kind of similar to what I used here on the bottom. Uh, maybe just a little bit brighter. So bring it down just a little bit. And maybe back off a little bit on the saturation. So this is hue, saturation, and value. Okay, so I have a green color for mine. And under the reflection color, uh, I'm going to just change that up a little bit. I'm going to give that just a little bit of a lemon yellow color. And I'm going to scroll down under refraction, a transparency to it that I want to give it just by uh, bumping up the transparency right here. So I'm going to go to 0.2 just to make it a little bit transparent. There's also a lot of presets in here. If you want to try any of these out, uh, there's a nice chrome setting in here. We might, you know, put chrome out here. We can do that. There's a rubber setting. Uh, you can replace that 100%. There's also a translucent plastic, which is pretty much what we just set up right now. We just set up a kind of a translucent plastic film color. We've got those settings done. And to select the truck, these are all NURBS patches. And instead of coming in here and trying to select everything like that, it's a little easier to come into the outliner and select through there. We're going to start with truck B, the back one. And I'm going to click and drag and just select everything inside that group, just all the way down. And then I'm going to hold down the control key. I think it's the command key if you're on a Macintosh. And then I'm going to select the axle. So that's deselecting the axle. You can see that right there. We'll put a different material on that. But that's a much quicker way to just grab all of these parts right in here. And then we can right mouse click and come down to our existing materials and we're going to assign that the, the MI truck. Okay, and it's going to go red. And let's go ahead and do that for the other truck up here. It's truck A. So we'll come in here, click and drag all the way down, hold down the control key and deselect the axle. Right mouse click over that and assign the MI truck color. Okay, so let's go ahead and close down our outliner. We can come under here, the tab for the attribute for our MI truck, and just change the color a little bit. I'm going to kind of push mine. Uh, that's a little too purple. Um, kind of just darkening down the red a little bit. Okay, and then the lit color. 
I do want to make that a little bit more of a purple. You're really not going to see the effects of this lit color, the way we're lighting our scene. We really have to get an actual light on it. It gives it kind of a paint look. And you don't see that until it actually renders out. Okay, so it's just going to look like the base color. And everything else can remain default on here. Okay, so now we have our rims and axle that we're going to put that metallic paint on. So let's open up our outliner again. Go back in here, and we've got, I'm going to start with wheel D on the bottom. So this is the outside. That's the actual tire right there, wheel. So we want everything but that. So I'm just going to start from the rim, click and drag, go all the way down. Right mouse click over here. And we're going to assign the existing material, and that is our MI rims. And right now they're red. We're going to change the color on that in just a minute. Okay, and we also need the axle. So you can click on the axle and just grab that, assign the same color that's part of the rim that we're going to use. And then we can go ahead and close that down, come under wheel C, and grab the four bottom ones here. Right mouse click over it, assign the MI rim color, and let's come up to the front here. We've got A and B to do still, so I've got B next, just repeating that, and closing that back down, and our last one is wheel A. And we've got the axle in here to grab still, so I'm just going to click on that right mouse click over it and assign the rim color. Okay, so let's close that down and we've got our attributes open for the MI rim color. And I'm going to just make this kind of a gray color. And the lit color, uh, I'm going to make it sort of a greenish color, kind of a soft green. You can see that in the, the sample right here. Again, you're not going to really notice it in the preview. Okay, so we've got materials covering our entire skateboard now, top and bottom. So let's go ahead and set up a camera that we're going to use for rendering. We do have the perspective camera here that we could use, but I really want you guys to get into the habit of using a render camera and not using your perspective camera to render through. Let's go ahead and create one of those under Create Cameras, just the top one right here, Camera. And we can see it right there in the middle. So what we're going to do is look through that camera, just come under perspective, and there's our camera one. And it's going to be right here in the center on the origin. So we're just going to pull back. You can see it says camera one down here now. So we're using that instead of our perspective camera. And I'm just going to kind of frame up on the board here so we sort of see the different parts. A little bit at the top and We'll probably do a couple different angles on here just so we can see the top and the bottom. I'm going to rename this under the camera one tab. I'm going to call this render cam. That way I know it's the camera that I have set up for rendering. Okay, so set up the angle that you're after. And you can bookmark your angles under view, bookmark, edit bookmarks, and just create a new one. So this is camera view one. You can always change the name of that. If you want, I'm just going to leave it as default. That way if I'm out here uh, kind of moving this around or I bump it, I can always come back to my bookmarks and it's going to snap it right back to that uh, bookmark that we set up for that view. Okay, so we've got our camera set up. Okay, I'm going to open up my render settings now. So we can access that through Window, Rendering Editors, Render Settings. There's also a shortcut out here. It's this icon. Okay, so under common, we're going to start off by coming down under our image size. Let's go ahead and change that to something a little bit higher resolution. Let's make that like an HD 720. Okay, and then under rendering options, let's open that tab up and we're going to take off that enable default light. Okay, so we're going to set up our own lighting in here. I'm just going to use indirect lighting to light this. So it's going to have a fairly flat look to it. I'm not going to set up a bunch of lights in here and do kind of studio lighting. We're just going to set up something very simple for a quick render. But we are going to change some of the default settings on here so we get a higher quality render. So under quality, my defaults to a draft setting. 
and we want to change that to production. Okay, so we can see the samples just changed. And also our filter, we're going to use a, a Gaussian filter, which is very high quality. And we've got ray tracing turned on. We can leave all of these as default right here. Everything else is fine. We want to make sure motion blur is off. We're not using any of that. Okay, and then under indirect lighting, this is how we're going to light our scene. So we're going to use uh, an image-based lighting. This is going to create a dome. So if you hit create, you'll see your dome right there. The yellow wireframe. Okay, come under my bookmark here. Snap it back. And we're not going to drop an image in here. We're just going to use a gray color, and that's going to light our scene. And we need to check on Final Gather to make this work. And we're going to take the accuracy up to 200. OK, and we can close this down. And under our mental ray, uh, this is our, our dome right here. I've got it selected. We can come into the Shape tab. And instead of dropping in an image here, we're going to change the file type to Texture. And it defaults to black. So we need to take this up to kind of a medium gray color. I'm going to take mine up to about halfway. You can also click on it and then select something out of here if you want. OK. And everything else in here is just standard. OK, so let's go ahead and frame up on that. I'm going to just change my camera angle a little bit here. I want to make sure that I'm getting a little bit of the, the trucks in here. So the second icon over here is your render window. And it's going to be pretty large because we're rendering a 720 HD image. OK, so we can see that on there. We've got a little bit of uh, reflectivity on here. So I'm going to go back to the deck blend and scroll down to uh, specular shading. And I'm just going to take the specular color down a little bit. And also the roll off, we can take that down. Uh, I don't want to completely flatten it out, but uh, we'll leave a little specular on. But that's probably just a little bit too much happening on here. So you can see the wheels are kind of shiny. They're sort of reflecting back in there. Same thing with the, the MI material paint. So we've got some uh, nice reflections happening in there. So let's just render this one more time, see if that kind of helps the top part of the deck. And again, you can kind of see the result here of me using a lower quality image. This really needed to be a little bit higher quality than what I got off the web. It really should be at least close to a 2K. So uh, the minimum size, 2048, would, would have been a little bit better. I think this was, uh, it was under 1,000. So we're starting to see the effects of that. It's looking a little soft. But everything else is looking OK. Uh, this is very flat lighting. We're not going to drop in a ground plane and cast shadows and all of that in this, in this tutorial. I'll do that in another tutorial for lighting. We can save this out as a PNG. It's going to drop out the background, and then you can take it back into Photoshop and put it on a different background if you like. So I'm just going to call mine so Skateboard Top 3 PNG format, saving that out. And then I'm going to change my camera angle. I want to kind of come under here and get the bottom part, maybe like that. So we can see the bottom image and the mental ray materials that we're using on the bottom. So let's go ahead and render that. OK, and this image is kind of holding up a little bit better, I think. That top one was really quite small. So now you're starting to see some of the reflection happening on the paint material here. It's looking quite nice. These are looking a little bit reflective uh, and maybe a little bit too transparent. So if you're having this problem like I am, you might want to just come back in here, maybe pull down on the reflectivity. It's pretty simple to do. So reflectivity is at 0.6. I'm going to just back off on that. Uh, maybe 0.2. So that's going to give it a little bit flatter look. And if we open our scene back up, let's just test it out on one of the wheels right here and see how it looks. OK, that already looks a little bit flatter now. So I think I like that a little bit better. And uh, this color is looking a little bit dark on here, the rim color. So I'm going to change that as well. I'm going to uh, brighten that up. You can bring up the ambient on it just a little bit. You don't want to bring it up too much because it will really flatten it out. But you can just kind of bring that up slightly. And then the base color, I'm going to brighten that up as well to about a medium gray. OK, let's bring up our render window again. And I'm just going to render this area right here, this region. 
There we go. That kind of brightened it up a little bit more. We're starting to see some of the detail again that we lost. We can select this region over here for the back wheel and render that. This way you're not having to re-render the whole image every time. So that's looking a little nicer, I think. We're seeing the detail that we want. So let's go ahead and just get the other two wheels rendered out here, and then we can save out this image. Okay. So... That looks nice. I think the, the wheels look good. They look a little transparent and reflecting just a little bit of the board back in here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this image out. And this is going to be bottom three, saving it out as a PNG. Okay, so this concludes the tutorials for the UV mapping and texture painting on the skateboard.